All right, so this is going to be the notes for 1.9. And this is called a four corner worksheet because there are four different sections here in each corner that is talking about limits and different ways you can see them on a test. So I'm gonna go through each of these very quickly and uh, we'll go over questions in class on tomorrow in our Zoom session. So this first one says that we wanna find the limit as x approaches negative four for f of x. So I go up here to f of x, I'm gonna plug negative four in. So that is going to be 16 when I square it, plus 12 minus 28, which is zero. So I should have done that all by itself probably. I'm gonna do g of x, which is zero. So the, bo the bottom goes to zero, the top goes to zero. So we need to try to fix this. So I'm going to take that f of x function that's up here at the top, and I'm going to factor that because we got to get rid of x plus 4. So that's going to factor to x plus 4 and x minus 7. On the bottom, we have x plus 4, so those reduce out. And then we're going to plug in that negative 6 up here, and this goes to negative 13. When I do the g of x, that's going to give me a 0 on the top. And when I do f of x, that gives me a zero in the bottom. So it's the same thing flipped upside down. And when I plug in, these reduce, and I end up getting 1 over negative 13. And then this last one, we already know g of x goes to zero because we did it. We're going to plug in h of x. So when I plug in negative 6, I get the absolute value Oh, wait a minute, it says negative four, sorry, we get zero in this one as well. So we need to think about this absolute value graph. So I'm gonna look at this thing real quick. So we've got, we can make this as negative one half in the front because the H is in the bottom. And I'm gonna take out that, take out that coefficient like I showed yesterday in class. And that's going to leave us with x plus 4 on the top over the absolute value of x plus 4 on the bottom. But remember, I showed you the graph yesterday. Now, this is a shift to the left, right? A shift to the left. So this, this part just over here on the right is a graph at negative 4, where this bottom part is at negative 1 going to the left, because like if I put negative 5 in here for x, that gives me a uh, one on positive one on the bottom and negative one on top. So it's negative one over there and it gives me a positive one graph going this way. So as I am approaching negative four and it says we're approaching negative four from the right side, the right side is this top one here. So we're going this way. So that means since we're approaching from the right side, that means the part on the right is approaching the limit is one, and we gotta take that negative a half times one, and that would be negative one half. I'm gonna come here to the right and do this next one. Now we got a picture of a graph shown above, and it says there is a vertical asymptote at six. So if you wanna put it in there, you can, you do not have to, but there's a vertical asymptote coming down here, which means nothing is going to touch that graph right there. It says, use the graph to evaluate the following limits. If the limit does not exist, write D and E. So the limit as X approaches 2 of F of X. So we're going to approach 2. Here's the value of 2. So we come from the left. We come from the right. And that value is negative 2. I hope I can't see that very well, but I think that's negative 2 if I count down 1, 2. Then the limit as X approaches negative 1. So negative 1 value is right here. So as I approach from the left, it is negative two. As I approach from the right, it is positive one. Those values are not equal. So that will be a D and E. Coming down here to this one, this one says, as I approach negative one from the left. So I'm approaching negative one from the left right here. And that goes, that's gonna be this negative two value as well as the one above it. And this last one says, as x approaches 6 of f of x. So 6 is here. So from the left, it's going to positive infinity. From the right, we're going to negative infinity. Those are not the same, so you don't have a choice. It has to be D and E. 
the bottom left one is saying sketch the graph that meets the following guidelines. So we, this says as you're approaching one, which right here is the value of one, and you're approaching one from the left, the value is going to two. So we could, we're going to put an open circle there, and it's got to be open because over here it tells me g of one is zero. So I actually have a point here. That is a point right there. So as I'm approaching from the left, it's going to two. Now, it does not matter where you go from the left. You just have to end up at this zero. So I'm going to make some weird graph over here. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to say it goes like that. So as I approach from the left, I'm going to two. That gives me that okay. This says as I approach from the right, I'm going to go to negative one. Well, that has to be an open circle here at negative one as well because g of one equals zero. And if you have two, two dots, it's no longer a function. So it doesn't matter what I draw going out here. It can be a line segment, parabola, whatever. I'm just going to do a line segment. It goes like this. So as we're approaching from the left, that makes this true. So there's what that graph would look like. Coming down here to do this bottom graph, it says as I approach two from the left, this graph is going to negative infinity. So what that means is there's an asymptote at least down here. And as I'm approaching from the left, this graph is going to be going down like that. I don't know what's going to happen other yet or anywhere else, so I'm going to come over here. And this says as I approach two from the right, this graph is going to be going up forever. So that means this graph is going like this. And then as I'm approaching negative infinity, so that's talking about this side of the graph, negative infinity is going out this way forever. This says that your y value is approaching two. So this actually has a horizontal asymptote. When you're dealing with infinity, so those are horizontal asymptotes. And here's two. So what that tells me is as I'm coming this way, this graph has to be approaching two, but it's never going to hit two. So it's it is going out that way to negative infinity and it's approaching the, the y value of two way out there. And this one says you go to the right, this one is approaching negative two, which is this value. So as you're going this way to positive infinity, this graph is coming down and it's starting to turn and it's gonna be approaching negative two out there, but it is never gonna touch it. It's just gonna get closer and closer to it. So that would be the graph for two. Then this next problem says, which limit from the upper right corner, so up here, does not exist for the same reason as problem two in the upper left? So, did I read the number wrong? Oh, it says seven, not negative six. So that changes this problem. Okay, so I still do what I did but I get a seven that I'm plugging in here. So this problem was wrong when I did it because I thought it was still a six. It was not. So on the top, it reduced to a one. And when you plug a zero in here, you get a zero there. So what that means is we have a vertical asymptote at seven because it didn't reduce out. And you have a number over a one over zero, which you cannot fix. You can't fix one over zero. So, we, uh, this is a vertical asymptote. So this down here says, which of the upper limits does not occur for the same reason? So this doesn't say going right or left, it's a vertical asymptote. So actually either one of these two answers should work because I believe they're, nope, that's a jump asymptote. This one's the vertical asymptote. So the limit number four at the top is the one that doesn't exist because as we're approaching negative six, One's going to negative infinity, one's going to positive infinity. So this is a vertical asymptote because that x minus 7 cannot equal 0. Sketch a graph of a limit described in the first problem from the upper left. So we're talking about up here. Sketch a graph of that problem in the top left corner. Well, these plus 4s reduced out. Hopefully you remember that means we have a hole at x equals negative 4. And then we're graphing the line y equals x minus 7. So what that means is we cross negative 7 is the y-axis because what's left up here is the equation y equals x minus 7 when you reduce out those 4s, the, the positive 4s. So I actually need to move this up because 
negative fourth over here and this graph has a slope of one. So I need to take this thing and move it up really high. I'm gonna put it up here, call that the X. I'm gonna call it negative seven right here. And since this slope is one, this graph looks like that. It's got a slope of one. Now somewhere over here, we're gonna put negative four in. Now when it gets to negative four, because the hole was over here at four, when X was negative four, we gotta put an open circle there. So that graph would look like that. And this line would keep going both directions. And then the last problem says using problem one from the using problem one from the bottom left corner. So we're talking this thing over here. Explain the difference between finding g of one and the limit as x approaches one. Okay, well, limits are values as you approach one. It is not equal to one. So you don't actually get to one. So we come this way, approaching one from the left gives us a value of two. Approaching one from the right gives us the value of negative one. So those that is does not exist. G of one means we want the point. We want a point when X is one. X is one. So the point up there that we get is one zero. And that is all the notes. So good luck on your on your problems you're gonna do, and I will talk to you later.